purpose here my purpose is to reconnect with God reconnect with the higher being the essence of who I really am mm -hmm. producer of this movie and this is where I live. I live in an RV. Big producer. I live in an RV. Uh, I love living here. Uh, there's something about living in small spaces and having very little. For the past two years, three years of my life I've lived with two suitcases and my two cats and uh, we travel around. Uh, not always in an RV but it just this last three years made me realize how little you can have and at the same time how happy you can be with less in your life. How I understand, what I understand the universe to be like. I'm not from another planet. I'm not an ascended master. I'm just a person who is going through the same searching thinking that you are. I happen to have a really nice camera and I can hook it up to my projector and so you can see my head really big behind me. We come into this world with a purpose, a divine purpose, and most of us go through this lifetime seeking, what am I doing here? And one day you wake up and you remember what you're doing here. And everybody has that awakening. Every single being has that awakening. Sometimes it happens on the deathbed. Just before you leave the body, you remember why you came here. Or, you could say if you're fortunate enough, you have that awakening while you still have a lifetime to live here. There is this perplexing question of why we're here and you know what is the meaning of this universe how do we explain this universe how do we get to be here and I think a lot of people are searching for that question at least at some point in your life everyone asks that question so I'm going to ask you that question today how do you explain the universe I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me guess. Uh, it's just such a funny question. Oh, 
way. That's a, if you have a better question, you, you could say that. But something that would get you right to that answer. Okay. I think one of the, the purpose of everyone's existence, if that is your question, to um, is to remember who they are, right? And as you, an earlier question just before that that you asked about awakening, is it to awaken? Yeah, it's to become aware of of who we are. It is. It's and to become aware of who we are just means that we suddenly, you know realize that right so almost as if we transcend awareness even and we just we just are that we're just now we're just being that and again isn't it interesting that when we say what is you know are we to awaken yeah we are to awaken from the dream in one sense Uh, in another sense, as we were talking about earlier, you know, there ultimately isn't anything to awaken from. You're smiling, David. We're already there. <laughs> Hi, Casey. Hi. I got a really easy question for you. How would you explain the universe? I do contemplate what is the purpose, and I think I've come to the conclusion that it's a lot of series of random accidents <laughs> that have left us where we are or aren't. But I always hope that my kids will find something greater and not find themselves so enslaved to work and things and find more something out there. Uh, do, you know, do you know anything about God? Have you ever heard of God? Do you know that God is dog spelled backwards? You ever heard that? Yeah. Um, as I got older, I started to find more of a spiritual connection in life, and I realized that, you know, we're just not um, a coincidence. This isn't just a you know, a random act that's happening, you know, we're all part of this divine plan. And I'm just trying to find my place inside of that divine plan. You know, God shows me, you know, where he wants me to go, but what I do with these opportunities, that's another thing. Well, to me, there is no God. And I learned, first I considered myself a, a, an atheist because my parents told me that's who I was since they explained to me that there was no God. But as I grew older and after I met the New England philosophers who believe more in intuition than anything, and it was, I don't remember the definition exactly, but they believed in the overtone that everything has an overtone of spiritual meaning beyond the physical. Uh, I tuned in to them and I changed my own title from an atheist to a pantheist. What I'm learning now is different than the God I knew as a child uh, that I was taught in schools and in society and through parents and family members. Um, the creator I, I'm beginning to understand is more of a neutral creator. I'll say I'm in between. I believe in God, I believe in higher power, but I don't know exactly what happened. Because they find things 10 million years ago, a million years ago, we don't know. Yes? How do you know what the truth is? You say some you people don't. say this, some people say that. You don't know what the truth is. You make your own truth. As I have stated earlier, I think we are part of the 
living kingdom. And I do not think that they believe anything other than the condition of their environment. But to love, okay, you want to love God. Mm -hmm. You want to love God and what you, you, that person, every person that is on this planet is God. And mean not the God with the big G, mm -hmm. <laughs> but the, uh, the uh, little G, I'll say. Okay. I mean, these days, the whole notion, notion is that, that we're all connected and, and that everything is sacred, effort everything. So that, that, that kind of, for me, sums up the Creator in the, in the... It feels like we all are. You know, we're all co-creators and we're all divine sparks, everything, every, every aspect of the world and, so, and universe. So it doesn't feel so much like there's somebody out there, you know, directing operations separate from us. It feels like we're, we're all part of it, creating it moment by moment, and we all have a choice at every moment to, to create, you know, light or dark. I believe in God. I pray all the time. What's your relationship like with him or her? I just, our powerful in this earth, I don't know. I just believe it. I, I pray, yeah. you know, every single day for me or for everybody. I'm not interested in the answer. I don't need the answer. It's just a detour. It's just a diversion. It's just an extraction from what's waiting for you. To not hear the voice is to not know God, not know the Universal One, whatever you want to call him or her, that higher power. So if you don't know the higher power, God, then you don't hear the voice. But when you're asked to know God, you start hearing the voice, I think. So those that don't ask, don't know. I don't believe there's a God. So what, is, what do you believe? I believe there's a consciousness of uh, human beings that's passed down from, from generation to generation. If I am, if I make an impression on enough people, they will then somehow spread that impression around, and thus I will then be living through other people. So I think that's what we think of as God. We think of the remembrance and the essence of people that other people remember. I believe everything is love-driven. I believe that everything is, is nourished by love, motivated by love, and love is the major force of attraction. It's love, is, love reflects itself in the principle of gravity on our planet. Love holds us to the earth. Love grows plants towards the sunshine. Love holds the planets together in our, in our solar system. Well, if I'm talking about it from the perspective, again, of my practice, A Course in Miracles, to go to the source simply means that we want to, the practice is about undoing the blocks to the awareness of the source, 
or as it says, undoing the blocks to the awareness of love's presence, right? It teaches us that, you know, um, we don't, we can't be taught the meaning of love, um, but we can have a, an experience of it. And again, the practice isn't about going to feel love, it's about removing any blocks to our awareness of what we really are anyway, which is that love. mentioning what you and Shiva would like to do is to, with your uh, video cameras, to bring what to, um, to the world? Love. Mm. Understanding. Love to the world. Mm -hmm. Love and understanding. Mm. <laughs> Harmony. Mm. But you had mentioned that you want to show, ask people questions about how they see life. And... Yeah. Why do we want to do that? Because I think it'll help. It helps me it's for my own edification, I suppose. To see, I want to see how other people, what they think is going on. I think it'll help people to, if they see that everyone basically thinks the same thing. And I think they do. I was out today at a farmer's market, mm. and David and I have been discussing this idea of making a movie and asking people about life. And what I discovered today is that every single being is interesting. And every single being has a story. And I'm curious to know your story. Um, to me, drumming is really more of a meditation. It takes me outside of my normal reality. It frees me from my worry and my anxiety. It's probably the only thing that does. It's accepting you for who you are, not what you are. Mm. So do you think is that what people want to experience to be accepted in this lifetime? Mm -hmm. It's not a judgment, it's just a matter of being in that point, in that point of just absolute love, no right, no wrong, no conditions and ifs or but. Mm -hmm. And you've experienced that unconditional love. Mm -hmm. I, I was born, I did not have a father. So the only one I came to know was my spiritual father. If I have practiced for the intellectual execution of playing the piano then it becomes very all-consuming and very fun and difficult because you can experiment and see what works for you. You can experiment and see what does not work for you because you have limitations. I just uh, kept coming, kept coming, and uh, next thing I know, I, I quit my business. You quit your business? <laughs> yeah, I was general contractor. Yeah. And I just you got gave, a message about that, right? That you're supposed to leave. I I I guess so. It just it was a feeling. And she's been through everything with me, through relationships ending, and you know, and beginning, and um, just she's just been part of my everyday life, and there's never a day that you can't go to your horse and hug her and everything in the world is okay. Just never. My grandfather took me up uh, to his lap uh, up in the mountains and he told me that before the sunrise, there's a sunrise. But it's not the sunrise we think, it's the sunrise of enlightenment.
I want to talk about some of the divine, the divine experiences that we had with people. Um, some of them had to do with people that we met and we would ask them very spontaneously, walk into restaurants and ask people if they'd be willing to be interviewed about the question of what the purpose of life was. It's always funny to ask people that question. And there were definitely a few people that said, no, I, I don't want to be interviewed for this movie. Um, but I didn't stop there. I could have just walked away, being a producer and everything, and say, we don't have our shot, we're going to walk away. But I actually decided to stay and get to know them anyways, because it's not about capturing all these people. To me, it's about connecting with people. So however that was, or is, there's a lot of people that we met through this process who aren't in the film, but who definitely touched my heart. So thank you. And it's sometimes it's hard to feel like playing because I'm very serious about it. So I'm a very serious guy most of the time. I'm not really playful, and outwardly anyway. It's probably because I have, you know, even even though I know better, I still um, chase a little too hard after the stuff that comes to me when I stop chasing it. I don't want to be too serious. I had that feeling after. Did yeah. you? Is that what you're trying to say to me about yeah. the teacher and? Right. I, I, I realized that that people are having an experience by being playful. And are you filming this? Today is our first official day of shooting. We've been shooting people already, but it wasn't official. This is official. We have waivers today. People are gonna sign on the form. What is our company called? Raising Human Consciousness Production. Is this the beginning of the movie? <laughs> we we just missed the exit of our first our first subject, so you know, see that's what happens in life. You miss a few exits, but you might meet somebody interesting along the way. I feel so privileged to be here. It's like a dream for me. I feel to be. privileged to be with you. Oh. It is really a pri it's a very special moment because two hours ago I didn't know you and I didn't know you existed. Yeah. Now I feel as though I've inherited a new wealth. Mm. Yeah. With everybody that I meet, I, I feel that my life is that much more enriched. And it's true that I have to say that I feel more about some people than others. But usually I feel this flow of love coming through me all the time. And I don't think it was that way all my life. I think in my latter years I'm feeling it more. I think I had that tendency in the past. But now it's in my latter years I think that I feel it more. And I feel it for everyone in general. But I feel a specific feeling for individual for certain individuals. The love has to match. Yeah. <laughs> it's like trying on a dress. It has to fit you. I have to feel that it fits you in my perception. <laughs> it's been a part of me since I was born, I think. And I, pl I started playing the piano when I was three and writing songs when I was eight. And um, I had a grandmother, and this is an interesting story about Louise that you just interviewed. Um, my grandmother, when I was eight years old, I used to make up these songs on the piano, and I would play them, and sometimes I'd remember them, and sometimes I wouldn't. And my grandmother was standing over the piano one day, and I played this piece, and she said, can that child do that again? Just like she just did it, talking to my parents. Like, can she play that exact same thing again? And it was such a challenge for me that I played it exactly the same as I'd played it. And this is a composition I just made up. And um, that was kind of when I started remembering everything I played, so that I was starting to create these songs. And so I started writing songs when I was about eight. You got a way of making me happy, seeing things in a different light. And when I'm lonely or feeling down, of you and it turns me around cause you got a way about you. The love of my life is from uh, Montreal. Ah, Montreal. I love Montreal. Yeah, it's she just went city. back. Ah, tell nice. me about the love of your life. You want me to tell you about the love of my life? Yes. I married her 26 years ago. And she's still in your life? And I left. Yes. And then 26 years later, I found her back on Facebook. There's a difference between knowing and believing, right? There is. 
A lot of people don't know the difference. Do you know the difference between yeah. knowing and believing? Believing is what you do when you don't know, so you can act like you do. I think the various points of view that we're showing in this film are going to help people to recognize their own personal truth. And when they hear what they believe coming out of someone else's mouth, and that someone else is not a guru, but just a regular person on a on a similar path, that will give them confirmation that they're not alone and that oh, what they're doing isn't so different from what other people are doing. And that should be a good thing. The reason why we're doing it is mm -hmm. because of love. Yes. And showing people that we're all the same in a way. We have our different stories. Mm -hmm. But when we, we look at you through the camera and we see yes. your eyes, yes. then we realize we're all the same. We have that beautiful connection of, course. of the soul. Of course, yes, yeah. yes. And again, oh, what's one, one thing you're saying, the eyes. I think the eyes tell everything. And I think you have a lot of story in the eyes and there's many time of the day, many time of the night where the eyes are saying different stories. When you drink, when you make love, when you eat, when you work on something, I think the eyes have different expressions. Yes, they and I do. I think it's very important. Your eyes are very shiny right now. You're happy. I'm very happy. He's very happy too over there. He's you look like you have happy. a beer or something. The eyes are sparkling over there. I love it. Look into my eyes for a moment. Do you feel that? Mm hmm What do you feel? It's heart to heart. It's kind of like, it's warm, it's fuzzy, it feels good. And it's not a feel good, feel good. It's just the presence of being one with you. Actually, I don't know exactly when it really began to change, but it um, it had to have been, I guess, while I was when I, after I came out here, uh, when I was uh, initiated with uh, Swami. Yeah, but uh, you know, people start noticing them and they're missing it, too, and then I started noticing, them. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, they Do you just, think the eyes are the, the seat of the soul? I believe they are, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, I, you know, over the years, I've, uh, oh, I guess about 10 years, I guess, now, or better, I've had this um, sensation in the head. Mm. It comes down through the, the top, and come down and, and, and come forward to here, to through that area. And it's just, it's just there at all times. Any time that I put my attention to it, it's there. And so uh, I think that has something to do with it. I asked my guru here uh, before she left the body. I told her about it, you know. And your guru's name? Is your guru's name? Uh, yeah, uh, Turiya Sangeeta Nandi. Okay. This old heart has had its fill. This old flesh has felt its last thrill. So please be kind, because this is the last.
Darling, don't you cry Cause it's just another ride Seek not to change the world. Seek rather to change your mind about the world. Right? And that really speaks to that whole piece about um, if I do this out here, then I will, then I'll be happy or then I'll be at peace. Right? In some of the more gross ways, like if I can change somebody's if I can change somebody else's attitude or if I can change somebody else's thinking or somebody else's behavior, often more to the point, then I can be happy, right? So it's never about, because I think sometimes people think, you know, in other sincere practices, they, they can get sort of involved in creating things here, creating this kind of life, creating the perfect job, creating the perfect relationship. And and that's fine. Certainly not. That's certainly not the practice of a course of miracles, because the course of miracles says I need do nothing, <laughs> you know. But whatever I'm encountering in any given moment, am I am I experiencing love? Am I coming from that loving place, or have I chose chosen to shut that down, to turn away from that? So seek not to change your, the world. Seek rather to change your mind about the world. Means the practice happens in all that we sort of encounter here. And can we be loving in the face of it all? Because it, it is really showing us then that no matter what happens, that none of this is real. That's how you learn that none of the dream is real and none of the dream can actually touch you because you can always change your mind about it. You can always choose peace. It's another saying in the Course is, I can see peace instead of this. I can see peace instead of this. If you can resist being mad on the freeway when someone is about to kill you, at least for me personally, it's one of my faults. If I can resist being really angry at someone who just about killed me because they're on their cell phone, that is a little victory. I think we need to talk a little bit more. I think I'd like to talk a little bit more about this project. I'm getting that feeling. I don't, I don't think anyone here expects to find some revelation that no one hitherto has spoken of. What we're expecting is for people to recognize their own personal truth through the eyes of another and for that to elevate them and to um, help them in their process, their process being awakening. Once we uh, really realize that and know that and know that we have to love each other before we can get back to God. Because uh, if, if, if you are just fooling around with uh, uh, infatuation and things, it, it doesn't work too well. Yeah. You've got to uh, be sincere from the heart. But I wouldn't mind you know, we do this meditation every morning, and I think it would be yeah, good that they, that they know that this is how we started our day. transformed in many different ways and so in our journey Dave and I have kind of gotten to know each other and brought us to this place to experience more of life to experience life not just talk about life but actually to experience As 
I was saying, with other traditions like, like Hinduism, um, they talk about the Maya or the illusory nature of the world. And, um, and it's so with A Course in Miracles as well, where it's talking about our experiences here are illusory because it says the only truth about us is really love and our nature as love. And it says that everything that you experience here is either love or a call for love. And that's where we get the opportunity to go in. If we're encountering something that is not love, we get the opportunity to look at that and make another choice of, of how we're seeing it or how we're going to react to it as opposed to seeing it as something that's, you know, of this illusion. See, if we're, if this is an illusion and the bodies aren't the truth about us, then there's nothing that really can affect how we, how we experience ourselves here, right? So anything that seems to be sort of a tragedy or, uh, you know, calamity uh, or of this world, we, we can reframe that by saying, I know this isn't the truth about me. Um, and all my fears around what seems to be happening here in the illusion um, are, are, part of, are part of the nature of the illusion. So yes, of course I'm having them, but I come to understand that I needn't be caught up in that and that if I just choose to see it differently by turning it over, that my experience changes that. And that is what a, a miracle is by definition um, of A Course in Miracles. It's simply a shift in perception from a place of coming from fear to a place of coming from love. Um, some people are very spiritual and uh, they go to religion and religion is great but often it becomes very dogmatic and uh, it becomes another trap for humans where nothing else is right and the reality is that um, the only thing that's really right is love and so if your religion is telling you to kill someone or hate someone you can be pretty sure that you might be a little bit off the right path because it's about taking care of each other and the easy thing to do is to take care of someone who you like. The hard thing to do is to take care of someone that you don't like. Yeah, devotion to sound yeah, through vibration. You know, that I think is the essence of the universe because everything is vibrating. If you look at, if you study physics and chemistry and all that stuff, it's all just, you know, matter vibrating. So if we get in there and we create a sound source and we create vibration, it's like, our thoughts can be wedded to those sounds and we add more velocity and more um, intensity through the sounds. Yeah. So that's where I'm hoping to go is to project, you know, happiness through the drums. And if I could just do that, I'd be, I'd be uh, way ahead, so. <laughs> So that's my job, is to kind of get people, get us entities together so that we have that expression. We can really express a higher vibration, and what it does is it breaks down the concrete and the crud. We all believe we are separate, and yet we are not. And 
in this belief, all disease, all different level, layers, all, all, everything that makes us think we are unique is actually part of the illusion. And yet, it is, if we choose to look at it in a different way, it becomes part of the solution, part of the process that we can use to awaken from the illusion. It's all a question of how you look at it. You look at it one way and you're living in a nightmare. You look at it another way and you're living in a gentle dream. So there's some part of the mind that's having, again, they equate it to like some part of the mind that's having a dream, right? And within that dream, though, is still the nature of our reality. And we'll call it the Holy Spirit for the you know, purposes of the practice of A Course in Miracles, right? So these are the symbols, it's almost as if it's saying, these are the symbols you've chosen, right? We're perfectly happy working with those symbols, right? Those symbols, Christ, God, you know, the Son of God, for many people here are loving symbols. Now, obviously in many situations here in the world, that's been distorted, right? But for many still, in Western culture, that's still a symbol of love, right? And it's a symbol of love that is not of this world, the Course says. And so, we're perfectly happy to use those symbols. And so, sonship meaning all of us and, and sort of the original, you know, the original mind, if you will. ocean without any landmarks at all I'm learning to look up the sky and noticing there's one star that doesn't move and if he can just find that star he knows where he is so we try to find a place in ourselves that can hold still gentleness brings us there gentleness helps us be there gentleness helps us stop and we have a way to navigate we have a way to say oh I'm, I'm too far this way I want to be the other way I want to be over the other side. Gentleness helps us pay attention to what comes to us and not miss it. Huh, huh, huh. Are you going to be a lap dog? <laughs> Life is an opportunity to give love. And that's pretty much it. And I feel that when we give love, we also um, receive love. And when we receive love, we are actually giving the opportunity of, uh, for others to give love. So it's very reciprocal. Uh, reciprocal? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it just creates that cycle of life, nurtures it. What were you going to say? You know what I say to you all the time? I love you so much. I love you too, Michelle. I love you, Michelle. <laughs> Ditto! I love you. I love you too. When I pull up to a four-way intersection in my car at night and four cars come up to the intersection and we stop and go proceed in an orderly fashion, without looking in each other's eyes or saying, you go first, me go first. No, no, no. To me, that's just an amazing uh, aspect of what human beings are. Consciousness, as I view it, is the ability to distinguish from good and bad. And realizing the consequences. There is no good or bad. It's how you see it. It's how you perceive it. 
And that is the yin and the yang, you know, the white, the black, the dark, the light. But I like the idea of the mandala and the Euroboros. You know, the Euroboros is the snake that circles and eats its own tail. So it's completion. Euroboros is the completion. And to me, that would be the ultimate experience in, in life, death, existence, is to experience wholeness and oneness. And so I completely identify with moving into a new time where there is no duality. So I don't know if that's what you were thinking or feeling. I'm just listening to your brilliance, Michelle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>particular song was is that recently uh, some friends of mine had a friend that you know passed away suddenly and we were sitting on the porch thinking about you know what do you think heaven or hell is and we're all pretty much atheist in, in that extent do we believe in some sort of afterlife and we joked about well I hope when we die that we go somewhere and there's like yeah beer and cigarettes are good for you and and then I started joking about the uh, the martyrdom belief of having the 70 virgins and I said you know I I don't need no 70 virgins, just one good woman is all I need. I think it's foolish to think we're only here once. Uh, and I think that um, there's just no other way to, I think, explain the connections. Like even yesterday, my daughter said she's, she was very connected to my grandmother, mm -hmm. um, who wasn't really connected to anybody, but for some reason she connected to my daughter. She was a Holocaust survivor. And we were walking out the door for camp yesterday, and she said, um, her name was Ema, we called her Ema. She said, how did she pass away? And she'd never asked me that for, for a really long time. She'd miss her and miss her. And, you know, I explained and then I called my mom and I said, is today the anniversary of her death? And she goes, it's tomorrow. Mm. And I thought, my mom, who doesn't believe in anything, was like, this is freaky. Do you think my gra <laughs> you think my mom is in her? And I said, I don't know, but if not, she's definitely tapping her on the shoulder quite often. So your question is why, if there is only now, why do we still have the past and the present and time, future. space and time, future, in our consciousness? That's a great question, I think, you know. It, it is a good question, and then believe it or not, like we were saying before, it's a subtle, it's a subtle trap, right? Because inherent in that is we're saying that, that they are really in our consciousness. And I think that's such a lovely distinction actually to go to, to understand <clears throat> that we can start seeing the inherent unreality of those things. Especially when we're willing to make a shift and move from that a place where we're blocked to a, a loving presence well that's one of my goals is to try to help and move people with the drums I think drumming is for everyone and if everyone can make a connection with it then we'd all have something in common so from that common ground then we can work out our problems our difficulties our anger and all the negative things in the world you know? I think drumming truly is the answer because you're 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 taken out of your normal reality. I mean, I wake up in a, like I've been in a trance and I all of a sudden, oh, I better think about what I'm doing here. But I was just playing for the sheer joy of playing. And um, I think that's the ultimate expression of, of life, um, the ultimate uh, connection with the spirit. Uh, people are basically good. They basically usually do the best they can do. I think basically people are good.
in, in 2000, I healed myself from ovarian cancer. And I did it naturally. And, and I did it through natural means, through juicing, cleansing, fasting, and above everything, through spiritual awakening. I realized that I'm responsible only for one life, my own. It's I'm perfect. so glad to have an opportunity to speak this way, because yeah. I can't speak this way with many people. Why not? Because they don't understand what I'm talking about. So many people think that they are their body, mm -hmm. and that's terribly limiting for them. My husband is really in the process of dying. And he thinks that when he does die, it's all over, it's finished. And what I know is that it's only the beginning. If you knew the truth, you would grieve when a person is born and celebrate when he dies. Om Sri Lakshmi Jai 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 Om Sri Lakshmi Jai 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 Om Sri Lakshmi Jai 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 Namaste. I think in a really large sense, a des our destiny is that there is that which is true about us. And we're always going to ultimately be that. No matter what it seems like we're off doing here, right? So in that sense, there's destiny. But destiny also... Um, it also suggests, you know, time, and it suggests space, right? Both being the key players in the Maya, in, in, in the illusion, right? If time and space doesn't exist, there can't be a destiny. There can't be a separate destiny, you know, so individual destiny then becomes suspect, you know. So it's an interesting concept. But for me, again, practicing A Course in Miracles, it's like, do I have a destiny? I don't know. Can I love right now? You know, can I love right now in this moment? Can I love if I become the director of the most interesting, you, you know, um, spiritually uplifting uh, project in the world? Or can I, be, can I be loving if I'm a janitor at the high school down the street? You know, can I be equally as loving? Can I be that presence? Can I be that presence if I'm homeless and unemployed? That's, that's the more important question for me. Yeah. Because I believe that's my destiny, is to be that open to love in any moment. What do you think the meaning of life is, Sky? Mm. I see. What is the meaning of life? Huh? Meaning of life. What is the meaning of life? Mm. Mm. He. Why I'm here yeah. in this earth? Yes. <laughs> feeding people. Feeding <laughs> people? Yeah. yeah. Feeding people. That's our mission to do. Yeah. yeah. So you bring a lot of joy to people's lives. Totally. I have one last question. What is the purpose of life? Oh. <laughs> For me, the purpose of life is to leave as much of my own personal body hair throughout the world. The purpose of existence is to come here and find yourself and about yourself. Mm -hmm. Nobody else. Mm -hmm. So that once you know self, your expression is only about that. There's no illusions about it. No delusions. It's just knowing yourself that you can function in this world and do and serve as you're supposed to do. I don't know. Have you ever wanted something really bad and then you got it and you still weren't complete? Well, I guess I've gone through enough of those times of wanting things, people, relationships, to know that I wasn't complete when I got them. So then I had to ask why. If something I wanted so much, why wasn't I complete when it came into my life? So then, I start searching, seeking, 
And I start having these moments with God, I call it God, where I'm just overwhelmed by this feeling of presence that moves through my body. And so my purpose for being here is to reconnect with that. Jesus says, am I the Christ? Oh yes, along with you. And he says, you have everything that I have. It's just that I don't have anything else. And so he's implying that we have the, he's talking about the illusion and the dream and this other belief system apart from what our, nat what our reality is in source or reality in love. And he's trying to say, use this medium of life to, in every moment, let that go and to see that it's not real. So, here I am making a, a video of, of how I understand the path toward enlightenment is what I understand it to be. And what I understand it to be simple, is pretty simple. You, it's just that acceptance, love, and forgiveness. And if we can do that, we can eventually see the world as it truly is, which is, which is then beautiful and of God. And so my purpose for being here is to reconnect with that reconnect with the higher being, the essence of who I really am. That's why I quit my job. A young student goes to, goes to his master and says, Master, I have done all that you asked and yet I suffer. I've done the practices and yet I suffer. I've given up wine and yet I suffer. I've given up meat and yet I suffer. I've given up sex and I still suffer. What do I do? And the master said, give up suffering. Thank you.